Hey everybody, my name's Tyler Lay. Welcome to my channel. Please, if you like what I do, like my videos, subscribe to my channel, and leave me a comment below. Tell me about the things you like and you don't like. That helps me make better content for you. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the properties of steel, and I'm gonna let you on in on a huge secret on the size of rebar. One important ingredient in reinforced concrete is the reinforcing steel, otherwise known as the rebar. We're gonna first talk about the properties of reinforcing bar, and then I'm gonna give you some secrets on how rebar is sized. Start out with the properties first. Typically, in reinforced concrete, most of the rebars are either ASTM A615 or ASTM A995 grade 60 steel. That's the most common. However, there's lots and lots of other types of steel out there, and they're becoming more popular. People are talking about them much more because it's the durability of our reinforced concrete becomes important. That's the ability for it to last a long time, especially from outside chemicals coming in and attacking our steel. One of the ways to attack that problem is to use a different type of steel, use a different type of rebar, and it's becoming more popular, and I predict that we're gonna see a lot wider use of these in the future. But for now, most folks out there use A615, A995, grade 60 steel. But there's other types out there, and there's other grades. This means you can find a grade 40 and a grade 75, so a higher strength and a lower strength, but they're not very common. Higher strength steel are being discussed a lot because they're helpful to reduce the amount of congestion, the amount of how close the rebars are to one another. It makes it easier to build, okay? Also, it reduces the number of bars that you may need inside your reinforced concrete member. But again, people are still talking about it, but it, it's not real popular. The most common types, again, A615 grade 60, A996, grade 60, and those are the yield strengths. That means the yield strength has a minimum value of 60. Now, it could be higher than that, but the minimum value is at least 60. And the fracture, the tensile strength, is about 90 KSI for both those. Now, there's another type out there called A706, and that is weldable for a W. It has a W stamped in the bar. That's for a weldable, weldable rebar. The, the steel of that rebar okay, is carefully controlled. And um, it makes it much, much easier to weld. And, and that doesn't mean you can't weld any rebar, because you can. But a weldable bar is a weld you can count on. A weld that's going to have fatigue strength. A weld that um, isn't going to just break easily on you. So if you need to weld rebar, then you need A706 W steel. Again, it's got 60 KSI, and you would design it similar to the other ones. But the most commonly used steel, again, is grade 60. This means the minimum yield strength is 60 KSI. Typically, yield strengths are higher than this, around 68 to 72, but we don't take that into account. For design, we just assume 60 KSI. You'll hear that again multiple times. And the modulus, the modulus of reinforcing steel is 29,000 KSI, right at 29,000 KSI. And this is pretty accurate. This is pretty close. Okay, and as I said before, the chemical composition of reinforcing steel is really not closely controlled at all. And that's one reason why you can't, you can't weld it. But in A706, it is much better controlled. And so it's weldable. This is the stress strain diagram for a rebar. Now, be careful. Not every rebar is going to look like this. They're all a little bit different, and it depends on something called the heat number. That's like the production of the rebar, okay? And so this is the stress on the y-axis. This is the strain on the x-axis. And this is the stress-strain diagram. You can see it goes up, and then it flat. It's flat because this is when the yield happens. Yield. You say, well, what is yielding? Yielding is a loss in stiffness. That's what it is. It's a sudden loss in stiffness. What's stiffness? Stiffness is how squishy something is. 
Okay? So if something is is resisting, resisting, resistance, and then oh, it gives up a little bit. It gives up. That's yielding. We can see this rebar as it's being loaded. It's got a certain stiffness. That's the slope of this line is the stiffness. And look, it's 29,000 KSI. And right when it hits about 60 KSI, it, oh, it gives up and it loses some stiffness. And then it does something called, this is called strain hardening up here. Strain hardening. And you can see the strength keeps going up and 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 up. And in this example, it got gets up to about 100 KSI. And then it goes down and down and down and down and down. And eventually it breaks. Eventually it breaks. Now, some, there's some important points, and, and please don't think that these points I'm about to draw are the same for every single rebar, but they are, they are some good estimates. There's some good estimates that a lot of people use for calculation purposes. Um, for example, this magical point right here, that magical point right there, that point of yielding, that point of yielding happens when 60 KSI, well, if, if we know from Hooke's Law, if we know that... Uh, that modulus equals stress over strain. That's what Hooke's Law says. And if we said, if we used algebra to move this around, so it's stress over modulus. And at that point, at that point, that is when 60 KSI happens. And that's when the modulus of steel is 29,000 KSI. That is going to happen at a strain at 0.0207, or a lot of people just simplify that to, I'm sorry, 0.0207. A lot of people just simplify that to just 0.002. That long story there to just say 0.002, but I just showed you kind of how to calculate that point right there. When the, when the steel begins to yield, a good estimate is at 0.002. And now that stress strain diagram, that, that yield plateau ends and starts strain hardening at about 0.01. Now, now please don't think that every bar is going to be exactly the same because they're not. And then that's going to keep going, keep going. The maximum is going to occur at about 0.11, okay? And then it's going to break at about 0.15. So one thing that's kind of amazing amazing, truly amazing about rebar is that it starts to yield at 0.002. And look at this, it isn't going to break until 0.15. Wow. Wow. That's a lot. That is like over 60 times the amount of strain you, you, you'll actually get when it breaks compared to when it starts to yield. That's a lot of, of displacement. That's what strain is, is a, is a movement. That's a lot of movement that you can get out of that bar from when it very starts to yield to when it breaks. And that is going to be huge, huge for our structures. It's going to give us something called ductility, okay? ductility, how much something can bend before it breaks. So we talked about the properties of rebar. Now let's give you some other information, something about the shape, something about what they're all about. Rebars typically have deformations stamped in the outside. I'm trying to show some pictures here. Deformations that are actually stamped in the outside. Why do they do that? It's so that um, they can bond or grab onto the concrete as they um, as they are pulled. Okay, so as you try to pull the bar out of the concrete, okay, it will actually grab. Okay, the bar, the, these little deformations will actually grab onto the concrete and say, "I don't want to go. I don't. I don't. I don't want to be pulled out. I want to stay in. I want to help transfer the load." Okay, that's what they're there for. These deformed bars come in things called different sizes. And in America, the sizes are between a number 3 and a number 11. Then they have something called number 14, okay? And then they have 
a number 18, and there's also number 20s, okay? But they're not covered by ACI, okay? They, they don't, they don't um, talk about those. And the bar number is the approximate diameter in one-eighth increments, okay? So therefore, if you have a number four bar, that means four-eighths, or it's a one-half inch diameter bar, okay? And this idea, this, this number divided by eight is the diameter works awesome for a number three bar all the way up through a number eight bar. But the other bars are a bit off. And I'll show you, I'll show you what, what I mean by um, um, a bit off in just a second. Let's, let's go to this table. I think this table will make maybe some more sense. So when someone gives you a number four bar, then this table tells you it actually weighs 0. 0.668 pounds per foot. And the diameter is half an inch. And that's the same thing as four eighths. The cross-sectional area is 0. 0.2 inches squared. You can calculate that just by using geometry, pi over four times diameter squared. And it also gives you the perimeter information. It's just pi times the diameter, okay? And this works great all the way up through number eight bar. And this gets a little bit off once we get to a number nine, a number 10, 11, 14, and 18. But this is helpful down here. This table shows you the, how, how far they're off. This is the percentage error. So this is the bar number, number nine, number 10, number 11, 14, and 18. And if you just used that bar number and assumed that it would be nine eighths, 10 eighths, 11 eighths, 14 eighths, 18 eighths. I know it's not right. I know that's not what you're supposed to do. But if you did, you would find this kind of error in your area. And so for a number nine bar, you're only off by 0.6%. It's not that far off. And for a 10, it's 3.4%. Three, three 11, it's 4.8%, and it's conservative. And the number 14 bar is the only one that's unconservative. It's about 7% unconservative in size. A number 18 bar, again, is pretty close. So this is a nice trick. This is There's some really cool tricks you can use with this to uh, change bar sizes, to check bar sizes. And so when someone says a number 7 bar, you'll know immediately it's 7 8 baby. That's the diameter. They tell you a number three bar. It's three eighths, baby. Three eighths diameter. And they're going to tell you, if they tell you a number 14 bar, you know you can't do that. You know you kind of got to look it up. You got to look up for a number 14 bar, the diameter is 1.693 inches. Thanks. Take care.